Okay. Extra strong means, okay. I don't think they should be so strong. Okay, let's try. Okay. So far, so good. Wow. So, uh, uh, hello, hello, Ross developers. How are you doing there? Are you recovered from our last week of Ross 2? Actually, our last month, because we dedicated the whole month to Ross 2. Okay, so uh, this month we are going to dedicate it to do some things with the gazebo because many people is asking us about uh, uh, doing and teaching more things about gazebo. The resources for gazebo online are very uh, poor, so very little, I would say. And uh, that's why they are asking us to do this. Actually, in order to let you know, we have put a, an, an, um, what is called a, a pool a pull on the YouTube channel here that you're watching. There is a community tab there. And we have put a poll there where you can vote for the next subjects that you would like to vote. Actually, we are talking about the level of the subjects. And also you can propose there any other subject that you would like us to, to take to do a, a live class for. So today, what we are going to do today? Today, we are going to learn how to create the simulation for the robot. Okay, so how to create the gazebo files that we need in order to make a robot work in gazebo, simulated. For that, for the robot that we are going to do, uh, to use today, it's called the Cosmo by Anki Company. And it's a very little robot. I don't have the, the robot here, but uh, it, you can check it on the internet. And it's a very funny robot and it doesn't have any gazebo simulation. That would be interesting to have the gazebo on the, uh, the gazebo simulation in order to, uh, to program it with ROS. So that's one first step. So that's what we are going to learn today. And then on the next day, we are going to build a wall for this Cosmo robot. So it will be the, the wall where this Cosmo will move around. So let's start for today uh, with uh, this project about uh, how to create a, a robot gazebo simulation. Let me say hello first to all the people here on the channel that I see here is Camiambas. Hello, how are you doing? Jun Juan, hello. And Gianfranco, Vinita, hello. Cheryl, hi, Cheryl. And Palav, and others that are there, the, the people that is there uh, just watching or listening. But remember that here in this live class, uh, you not only have to stay there and watch and listen, but also you have to practice. How are we going to do this? Well, I'm going to just uh, send you now through the chat a link to a project of ROS that we call a ROS jet that you are going to open right now, right now, live during this, uh, th this class. And you're going to open it and then work with me, follow the instructions and execute the simulations, see the robot appear, the sensors, etc. So you are going to practice with me at the same time as I am explaining this to you. Okay, so uh, then let's go. So for this, how we are going to do that share of information, share of ROS yet? How are we going to do that? Well, we are going to use the ROS Development Studio. That is the tool that our company is building. And that is online, it's free. You can use it for programming your robots with ROS and especially to share your projects with ROS. Let's do it. Let me show you with a demonstration how it works. So let me share my tab, my, my screen actually here. So let's go. And here we have the uh, ROS Development Studio. That's my account. And I have several projects for today. We are going to use this one, the ROS Developers Live class number 46. And uh, uh, how I'm going to share this ROS jet. This is the, the ROS jet, the, the ROS project that contains everything, the instructions, the simulations, ROS code, etc. for this live class. And what I'm going to do is to 
press this button here, share, and then copy the link with you. So I'm going to copy this link and share this link in the chat of this live class. But before doing it, I'm going to shorten it here using Bitly because it's too long for it's too long for for the chat. So sometimes it doesn't show properly on the chat. Okay, so let me see. What is showing on the... Okay, see ya. Here, so let me show that with you. What is happening there? It's showing something strange on the screen. I don't, I don't understand what is that. On the share screen? So just let me know if you see that strange things there. Okay, so that's strange because it's just a computer that is is showing the, the screen. Well, anyway, so you have the link there on the chat. Click on the link, and by clicking on that link, you will get a complete copy of this Rosjet of today. It's the Ross Developers Live Class 46. So you should get into your account of the Ross Development Studio and get a copy of that one. Remember, only that one, okay? The others are my own Rosjets that I'm working with, and so you are not going to get it now. So uh, you should get this, and once you have this Rosjet, the only thing you have to do to open it and start working with me today is press open Rosjet. So whenever you are ready, press this button, and then you will get the Rosjet open. Here, this is the screen. And yes, so let me check that everybody's on the same page. Okay, it says, Scamandia says, I can't see it in ROSDS. Okay, great. So then open it and go to this screen. Actually, if you open from zero, then you should get the Jupyter Notebook opened, this Jupyter Notebook. In my case, I was practicing and checking everything working before starting the class, and then I closed everything, so that's why it didn't appear automatically. But for you, you sh it should appear this notebook here. By default, open it. In case that it doesn't, for whatever the reason, because you close it like I do it, you can go to Tools again, select Jupyter Notebook, and then select the file. Okay, let me show you again. So I'm going to close it. Then tools, Jupyter Notebook, and then select the file of this live class. That is this one. Okay, so far so good. Let me check that everybody is here on the same page and then we'll start because today we have some work to do and I'm going to try to, to finish on the, on the time. Okay, I see no problems on the people on the chat. So I assume that everybody is running let me know if you have a problem okay so remember in these live classes this is like a live class so you can interrupt me and let me know if everything is so is something is not wrong or something you don't understand you don't follow it doesn't show for you you can you can do that on the on the chat okay so so far so good great so let's continue. Then uh, what we are going to do is to simulate this Anki Cosmo robot. That is this robot here. Uh, actually, you can see the picture is very big, but the robot is not so big. It's a small robot. And then uh, what are we going to, to do here is to uh, create the what is called the URDF. The URDF is a file that is used by Gazebo and also by Ross to the final robot so that URDF can be used for then for computations for the simulations for representations whatever it is needed and and yeah so what I explained to you before is that we are providing these live classes of ROS yet the ROS yet is this ROS project that you have open here and that contains the this notebook it contains some code that you are going to see here if you go to tools and open the IDE then you will see that we have here already the Cosmos simulation here inside the simulation workspace and some files for configuration of RBIS, etc. So many things. So that's a ROSJet. And I have created this for you 
uh, with the help of Tushar also, of course, Tushar and I. And uh, you can also do it. You can create your own and share with your students, with your colleagues, with your clients or whatever. Anyway, let's continue with this. What are we going to create is this. So what, the final result is this one. And um, what is composed this robot of? Well, th those are the things that we have to, to, uh, to simulate. Well, the main body, everything on the body, then the head contains a, a, a camera and also an IMU sensor. And it can also rotate a little bit. Then also there is a lift mechanism that all those arms here, and that it's used to play with the cubes. Then it has the wheels, those there on the other side, and then it has a drop sensor on the base that is pointing uh, down, downwards in order to detect when the robot is about to fall in, in, in the table, because usually you will use on the table. And okay, so that's what we are going to, to do today here. And uh, you must know that in Gazebo, you have two formats for defining a simulation. One format is the SDF, and the other one, one is the SDF, and another one, the URDF. Okay, so Gazebo can use both, but ROS can only use URDF. So that is why we have decided that for the definition of the robot structure, we are going to use the URDF because we are going to interact with ROS. And then for the definition of the world where the robot will live, that's the next life class, is going to be on SDF format, okay? because it doesn't require to have ROS support. And that's it. So um, let, let's start. So um, actually, this simulation <laughs> contains a lot of things in top. So that is why I have already provided to you the simulation here. So everything is already done and ready. But I'm going, we are going to go through the different parts through this notebook so you understand what it is, uh, what, how it works, so you can create your own simulations. And before I do that, let me check. Uh, can, uh, let me check if everybody is working. It says, uh, Danny Dar says, up and running. Scamandia says, I have no connection to the kernel. It is OK now. OK. <laughs> OK, Scamandias. Scamambias. Scamiambas. Yeah, OK, Scamiambas. Sorry. Scamiambas. So now I see that everybody is OK. Up and running. Danny Das also. Uh, Let's go then. So um, in order to define a simulation for a robot, you need to create two things. The two basic things that compose a simulation of a robot, the links and the joints. Okay, so those two things, and you have to understand the difference between them. So let's just start with the link, okay? So this thing here that you can see in this picture, that says link origin, inertial, visual, collision, is this green thing. This is a link. And a link is, it, it, it means a link, it's a part of the body of the robot. For example, if we go here, so one part can be the head. So we can say that the head is a link. Then we also can see, we, we can say that the wheels are another link or that this structure, here that it's used to lift the cubes, it's another link. So all the different parts that are that composing the robot, it's a link. It's a part. Okay. Let's 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 check, for example, the case of the head. That is easier to understand. Okay, so for every link, you have to define three things. You have to define the inertia, the visual the visual appearance, okay, and the collision. And you have here, all of them represented here in this green part, okay? So don't, don't pay attention to this joint because that's something we are going to see later. Now you pay attention to the link. So this is the link and it contains the visual. The visual is the part of the robot that you are going to see on the simulation. So is the thing that is represented. So you can see here this head with this shape and these colors and these 
things in there. So that's the visual. The visual is just for our eyes. So it's just for us, for the humans. Actually, it has no other thing in the simulation. Well, actually, if you use a camera inside the simulation, you can detect the visual. Yes, that is right. You will detect the visual. So that's the basically the part of the that shows on the simulation. It's represented on the simulation. Then we have the collision. The collision is the shape that defines how we are going to treat that, that part of the robot when it collides with other things. So, for example, for the head, we can say that the shape of the visual is this one that you can see here. But the collision is just a cube. It's a simplification of this shape without those round corners, etc. So why do we do that? Because it's a lot simpler for mathematics, for the computation of the cycle of the, of the physics engine that is inside the simulator. Then it means that the simulation will move faster, will go faster. So whenever you can simplify, you should simplify the collision of your, of your robot. Sometimes it's very difficult because the shape is so complex that you cannot simplify. Then you will indicate that your collision is the same as the visual. You can do this. this. You can specify this. And we are going to see how in, a, in a minute how it is. Then finally, you have the inertia. And the inertia is, describes how the mass is spread, is distributed along that piece. So for general, in general terms, the distribution will be uniform. So all the parts of this piece contain the same amount of mass. Yes. So here it's an example in XML on, of the URDF, I mean URDF format, of a, of a link definition. And here you can see the inertia part, here the visual, the visual part, and then the collision part. Okay, so how, how do we do that? How do we define for the inertia? You, you have to define this first. You have to indicate the mass. You have to indicate the mass. And then you have to indicate the inertia matrix. And for, for this matrix, so it depends on the shape. And it's a little bit complicated to compute that. So uh, there are some formulas that you are going to see below how to compute that. But usually, in most of the cases, we use just the, the typical formulas for a cube, for a cylinder, or for a sphere, because it's, simple. it's a lot simpler. And then we have the visual. The visual, we are indicating a mesh file. This is a file that describes in collada format here. This is collada format. So it's indicating, hey, please, Whenever you have to show this part, the base link of the robot, the base link of the robot, whenever you have to show this on the simulation, please use this file. That is a 3D file, this, which, contain, which contains the body. It basically, is that. Basically, that's a geometry tag and then the mesh that you are going to use. And then finally, we have the collision. And then for the collision, in this case, we have used the same part. So we have used the same um, 3D file for the collision. But you can use, because it's a little bit complex to simplify that. But you can express here other geometries, like a cylinder, like a, like a cube, or a or a sphere that simplifies. So this is putting some overhead on the simulation. But on the other side, then it will, the computations of a collision will be more accurate. So that depends on, on what you want. Usually, usually it's better to simplify. But in this example, we have decided to use the, the mesh file. So how do we create, for example, those so for, for the inertia, it's clear, OK? So you use the formulas of inertia, how to compute the inertia matrix of, uh, of an element, of a physical element. You can check that on the Wikipedia. You will have all the formulas there. That's OK. OK, so 
you have that, then it's a little bit complicated, but you know how to do it. Then for the mesh file name, how do you do that? Well, I can tell you how we have done it. In order to generate all the pieces, all those die files, those are collada files. So we have we have had to do some work in order to provide those pieces to you. So you can show the actual Cosmo on Gazebo simulation. You can find those pieces, all of them, here on the on this directory, Cosmo description meshes, Cosmo die. So if you go to the IDE that I have already opened here, so you go to Cosmo description here inside the simulation workspace, okay? So it's inside simulation workspace, then source, Cosmo simulation, then Cosmo description. Then there is a directory that is called meshes. And here you have all the parts of the body that we have divided the body. So how did we get those parts? So you can have them here. Well, what we did is first to download the full model of Cosmo from the official Cosmo SDK. So that model is a full model. I mean, it's a model like this, that it's just one single piece, everything together. Then what we did is to import into Blender, then adjust it a little bit that we needed to, to adjust, and then use Blender to separate each part of Cosmo Robot into different pieces. So each piece here has been separated and manually separated. That's a, that's a pain, really. It's a, it's a pain. of It's a lot of work. But yeah, so Tushar did it that, and he did it very well. So uh, we separated those pieces, and then each part, uh, we, we saved it, we exported it as a Collada file, and that's the result, those files here that you have here, all of them. Okay, so that's a way of doing it. If you have a, a model, 3D model that you can import into Blender, that's a way of doing it. So we are not going to see that because that's a lot of work, but there are some tutorials. Actually, we have some videos for that. Well, uh, so that's for the visual. And also we have used this for the collision of some of the parts, some of them. Now, let's go to the joints, the second concept. But before we go to the joints, let me check if there is any question. So Danny Dask is asking, uh, uh, Ricardo, do you know any tool to compute the inertia base of an STL? Because of, for something like a cube, the Wikipedia formulas are okay, but for something more tricky like trace structure on the turtle wall two, yes, you are right, Danny. So it's it's correct. So that's a um, it's a problem. And then there is a tool that it's called MeshLab. So you can use MeshLab. Let me write it down here on the chat. So with MeshLab, you can do that computation for that. And actually, there is a tutorial in uh, ROS, in Gazebo. I, let, me, let me just check here quickly for everybody. So it's called uh, ROS, uh, no, let me check Gazebo, MeshLab, Inertia, yeah, something like that. Then it should, should say here. And here, uh, there is a tutorial about how to compute it. Let me open it and check if it is working or not. If it is the one that I'm looking. OK, so it's getting some time. OK, so let's, let's move forward. And let me just send you the link. And then you check it. OK, but you get the idea. OK, so there is a tutorial for that. Uh, the problem of that tutorial is that it doesn't work very well with uh, small with small uh, pieces. If the pieces are very small, then it will not work. Okay, so there it is. So Rushir says that it, he wants it also, that he wants me to share it. Okay, so great. Then there it is. So you got it. And... Also, we we did something similar, uh, and, and there is a, also there is a video here 
for yes. So let me share this video also because I think that it's going to be interesting for you. Let me check here. That video can be also interesting. I haven't seen it, that one, but it looks like it's doing the procedure of, the, of that tutorial. Great, let's continue. Then we have the joint. Remember, we have two elements for defining the physical structure in URDF. One are the links, that the links are every part that we have in the robot. And then we have the joints. The joints are the elements that, the, that indicate how to connect two different links. So two different parts, how do they connect? So for example, imagine that you have a, a car, you are simulating a car, then there will be the wheels and then the, the body structure of the car. The, the, you will put a joint that connects the wheel, each one of the wheels to the main body of the car. So you will have four joints, one per each wheel, of course. Then when we define this joint, what we are indicating, we need to indicate uh, several things that you can see in this in this picture that I took from the, this picture is from the ROS wiki, the official wiki of ROS. One is the parent link. So this green part is one of the links that we want to connect, okay? And then there is the child link. That's the second part that we want to connect with the parent. And then in the middle, there is the joint. Okay, so you have to be clear which one is the parent and we go, which one is the child. You have to specify this. So, for example, if we go here to one example, we define a joint like this. Hey, this is my name. We are going to see what is this type. But basically, you have to indicate which parent link. Then you indicate here the name of one of the links, that you, one of the parts of the robot, and then the child link. And remember that this name you have to find previously here on the top here when you define a link. So you say link name, this base link, for example, and then you specify the inertia, visual, collision, etc. So here in the joint, you are indicating two links, the parent and the child. Okay, then you have to indicate the type of joint connection. So is this joint a movable joint? So how is it going to move? It's a re revolute, for example. Revolute means that it's a, it's a joint that is turning. For example, in the example of the car, it could be a revolute, for example, but actually not because the revolute has a limit of rotation. And you know that the wheels on a car is not, it doesn't have a, any limit. But we can use a revolute for the head of our robot because this head has a, has, it cannot rotate forever, you know? So it can, it just has a limit in rotation. So that for the head, we can use this, but for a wheel, we'll use, we would use a continuous type. And then there are some other types here that you can check, different movements, ones are, um, uh, floating, moving in all the degrees of freedom, and the prismatic that is like moving <clears throat> along, um, it's moving along um, a line, for example, or the one that we are going to use also is the fixed in this case. So in this, in this simulation, we are going to use the revolute for head and for the arms, that the lifter that of the robot, and then the continuous for the continuous for what was it it was for i don't remember the continuous no the continuous i don't think so okay and then we have the fixed the fixed are parts that are not rotating at all so would you define the connection between the parent and the child and this is a connection that cannot move okay so that's how it works then uh, apart from that so that's the type so that's a type that you put here, okay? And then, oh yeah, the continuous is for the wheel, sorry. Yes, I forgot. Yeah, now I see it here. For, for the continuous is for the wheels of the robot because those, they have to turn forever, yeah. Then uh, another thing that you have, uh, in the joint, you have to indicate the origin. The origin in X, Y, Z means 
in which direction from the parent frame you are going to put the join. So it means, okay, so here is the zero, zero of the parent, okay, of piece. This is the zero, zero. Then in this axis, in which direction are we going to put the joint? In this case, the direction is on the X, X, uh, let's say X3, Y0 is the joint. We put the joint. But it could be that the joint is here in the middle, on the top. I, I don't know. You, you have everything. It depends on the model that you are building. So that's the, the reference, the, sorry, the origin that you specify here. Okay, so is the from the parent frame where you put the joint. And then we have another thing that is the axis of movement. This is in case that is a rotation. But then you have to, to specify in which axis is this joint going to turn. Is these axes are related to the joint zero zero? Okay. So it's on the joint zero zero, not on the parent frame. So on the joint zero zero. So you can say it's rotating on the y axis, then you would say like here. Like this is zero because it's not rotating anything. This is one because it's rotating on the y axis. And then this is zero. And then you can do all the combinations here, depending on, on which direction you want the joint to rotate. So you have, you can create quite complex models here. Here, I have included here an online course for robot creation of with URDF that we are doing. And it's a lot more, more, contains a lot more of information about all those controllers and uh, types of joints and how to create. You are going to create several robots. Have a look if you are interested, OK? OK, so uh, we have defined the joints and the uh, links. That's a basis for creating this simulation of, of Cosmo. The next thing that I'm going to teach you is about chakra macros. So this is a way of creating a macro inside a URDF model. And what are a macro? A macro is a set of XML codes, XML definitions, can contain whatever you put there that it's valid in the URDF standard XML format. And then the, you will create this because you want to call this from, you, you want to include in several parts of your robot URDF the same the same code so you don't want to repeat this all the time all the time repeat this in this place in this other place because you have four wheels and one here one here one here four times the same so you create a macro and then you afterwards you just say just put this that is a call to the macro then in this case for example we have defined a macro that is called cylinder inertia and then whenever we want to include this cylinder inertia that contains one inertia for a cylinder, then we just put this code. Instead of putting everything like this, we just use this. Okay, so the important thing here also is that you can pass parameters. So you can create the same macro for different, different um, elements. So you, you, that you can operate on those on those variables. For example, in this case, if this is a cylinder inertia, some of the parameters are the radius of the cylinder, then the length of the cylinder, and then the mass, and also, of course, the origin also. And then by having those parameters, you can create this for any inertia of any cylinder that you have in your simulation. And then it will compute here the inertia matrix for it based on the radius length mass. Okay, so uh, basically is that there is more details here about the chakra properties. I'm going to skip it and just uh, show you an example here that, uh, well, actually the example is, is this one. I'm going to skip the property. You can read it later. It's just going deeper into the chakra. I'm going to skip it. So, uh, yeah, so that's chakra for creating a macro. So now with all those building blocks, we have, remember, the links, the joints, and those chakra macros, 
Chakro macro, oh, chakro macro. Yeah, so with that, we can build the Cosmo robot. Okay, so in theory, we should go now step by step creating the Cosmo robot, but it's a lot of work. So oh, I have already provided today in this class. Please don't take this as an example for future classes. Okay, so in the next classes, we are going to build everything. But for today, because I don't want to keep you until very late here, as I always do. So uh, I have provided everything. The code is here for your information of the whole um, uh, Cosmo UADF. Here it is. But actually, it's already created the package here inside the Cosmo description and included, let me close here, in the URDF file. So in this, what, what I have do, done here is very simple. I have created a Cosmo description ROS package. You know how to do that, don't you? Yeah. So then I have created inside that package, that is a ROS package, I have created a config, a launch, a meshes, and a URDF file uh, directories. Inside the meshes, I have put the, the, all the body parts that I created from Blender. Yes, and then actually that Tushar created, not me. And then uh, here inside the URDF, we have put the Cosmo URDF that is this one here. It's all this code that you can see on the notebook. Okay, and here you can see that we are following these examples that I mentioned to you. So we define a link that is the right belt, and then it has a box, box inertia chakra with this mass okay, so we should go up and see what this box inertia default is is above so you can see it here okay so it has to be here box inertia default is this one here so it's all this code that we are introducing there and I don't remember, but yeah, around here. Then we have the visual, and that's it, the link. Okay, so that's basically uh, a link. Then we create another link. It's more complex. This one contains more parts. Yes, okay. And then the next link, and then the next link. And once we have all the links for all the parts that I have created here, have included here, when we have all the links, then we start establishing the joints. And for each part, then you have to follow which part it is. This joint is going to be called like this, and it's going to connect the base with the front left link with a continuous, with a continuous joint type. Okay, and here on this axis, and it's going to rotate in this one. Then you continue doing this for all the joints that connect all the parts of the robot. Another joint another joint, another joint, etc. And then finally, you got it. Okay, so now, uh, now that you have the whole code, this code is the URDF file that you have here in the Cosmo URDF. So you can do a double click and then open it. Let me show you here like this and increase the size. So here you can see the code. Not that. Yes. So far, so good. Let me check. Uh, Rushir says that gazebo scene org not working. Yeah, it sometimes happens the, with their website. Then please let me know the names of libraries required to run in on my ROS machine. Yeah, okay, <laughs> I'm not going to do that. <laughs> Rushir, I'm sorry, that's a pain because I don't know. I don't know and that's a pain to, uh, to configure everything. That's why we are doing here on the ROS DS. Let me tell you that I always develop on the ROS DS. I'm never developing on, the, on my local machine because it's, everything is more complicated. You need to install everything and here everything is installed. So sorry, you are on your own on that, <laughs> Rushir. <laughs> Let's go. OK, so now that we have the URDF, we create a launch file for launching and spawning this URDF file 
on a ROS, on a gazebo simulation. And this launch file is included here in the launch directory. So, okay, so it's already done. But let me show you, because this is very, is last, is very updated one. So anyway, in this uh, launch file, you should include this code here. This is the typical code of ROS for getting parameters for the simulation, like starting pause, using time, GUI, etc. Okay, so this is the standard way. You, you can copy and paste. And the final one is the model, the only one that we have added. Is this, this is just in case that you would like to provide another different model. In this case, we are providing our Cosmo URDF model that we have here, Cosmo URDF. Great. Then uh, the next thing that we do is to call here, is to call gazebo ROS package. And then inside this package, we launch an empty wall. So what is going to do this is to launch an empty wall. And then it's going to spawn our URDF of our robot inside that empty wall. And for that, you need those two instructions here. First, the param name to load into the param server of ROS, you need to load our model. You know, this model is an argument that is, a is an argument that we have here, okay? So it's our model that we have created, don't, don't panic, okay? So I know that many, many steps here, too much complicated, but this is the command that we indicate, oh, here we have a chakra file, it, it, because we have included URDF, so we need to specify that it's a chakra also. So it's, it's always the same command, okay? You can copy everything here for your own robot. You can use the same sentence, and the only thing that you have to change is this model that you have to set to your own model here. Okay, so that, then, you can spawn into the empty simulation. And for that, you have to copy this structure like this. Exactly. It's exactly the same for any other robot, provided that you have, you have indicated here your own URDF for your own robot. OK, so those are the steps for spawning. So let's do it. Let's do it. How do we do? Let's activate this launch file. And for the ways, let's let me show you the simple one is go to simulations, then select launch file. Select launch file and then select here on the, on the gazebo launch. And then press launch. So now a gazebo simulation file should appear, uh, window, sorry, should appear. And then the simulation is going to appear here in a few seconds. In the meantime, let me check. The chat if there is any question no question there okay so you are launching yes and here we have the simulation let me get out a little bit so here we have the cosmo simulation in gazebo great now let's continue because we have still some things to do okay so now we need to add these sensors. Remember, it's not only the shape, it's that we also have to add the sensors. And for that, what we do is that to use gazebo plugins for every one of the sensors. There are three sensors, okay? The drop sensor is the one, the infrared sensor that is pointing downwards to detect if the, the robot is going to fall. Then the IMU sensor and then the camera sensor. So we need three plugins for that. Then also we need a plugin for the wheels. Not only the, the sensors need to be activated with Gazebo, also the, the robot movement. So for that, we need a plugin for moving those wheels. And the one that is provided by Gazebo is called the Skid Drive Gazebo plugin. Finally, finally, we also need a controller uh, controller for the movable parts of the robot that are the head and the lifter here. So the robot can move its head up down and also the lifter up down to grab the things. So those are the only things that remain. Let's start by adding those things to the URDF. Well, actually it's already added, okay? If you go to the URDF, it's already added. So I'm here just explaining to you. 
The first thing that you need to do if you want to make the robot move on, on Gazebo is to add this sentence here. This is the sentence that says to Gazebo, hey, please add Gazebo ROS control. And then it loads the plugin for Gazebo ROS control. That's it. Then the next thing is to add the different plugins for the different sensors. So we have another Gazebo that is for the camera. And here is the code that you have to include for any camera that you want to include in the in a simulation. It's always the same, but you can change the different properties of the camera, like the field of view, the number, the type of noise, etc. But it's basically the same thing and the topic in which you want to publish, for example. Okay, so you add these parts, those two parts that start with gazebo tag. Yes, and then the, the, at some point you indicate the plugin name. Then finally, uh, we have for the sensors, we have the infrared sensor that it's also another plugin that is called ROS range. And it's the same as for the camera. So is this code, you can copy this code and put into your own robot simulations and just modify the values of the resolution, the minimum angle and the maximum angle, etc. So that's it. Oh, oh, sorry, I forgot about the IMU also, another sensor. So we are adding also this IMU sensor and there is another plugin by Ross. So everything of those is already done. You don't have to do anything. Okay, so now, well, those are some parameters for the wheels. I'm going to skip that because it's actually, it's not mandatory to have that. And then the, the final thing that we need for the for the wheels is to add another plugin is the plugin for controlling the wheels and again again you can copy this for your robot and just modify the values for your own robot it's the wheel diameters the wheel separation which one each one of the joints that is composing this four wheels robot okay so basically that's it now, uh, we reach another part that is the part of the joints. So uh, the joints of the lifter and of the head. Then for those two, you need to indicate and create a transmission. A transmission is the way to define which type of controller those parts are going to use. So remember that we have one in the uh, head. Here is the head. And then there is another joint that is going to move that is the lifter. The lifter is this part here in the front of the robot that can carry a cube. We'll see that on the next live class. So, but before we use it, we need to activate this. So how do we do? Well, we have indicated that there is a joint here around there and that joint is going to have a transmission. Yes, so you are indicating with this transmission is it's kind of a plugin. We, you can say uh, sim something similar like a plugin, but with you by using ROS control. So you need to de define this transmission. And here in the transmission, you indicate for which joint of the ones that we have defined applies. So is the to the base to lift. So this applies to the base to lift. And then which type of controller we are going to use the hardware interface for joint interface. So, well, that, that's the, the type of interface, yes. And uh, yes, so you have to do this for the, for the lifter and also for the uh, head. And once we have those two things, we know that those joints are going to be controlled by a joint controller, a specific joint controller. Then final thing that we need before we launch everything is to provide um, on the, for those joints, we need to create a configuration file that provides the values of the controller that is going to, to run those joints here. And this file, it's included here. This configuration file is included here in the config directory that you can open. So this config file, what it is saying is 
indicating to the simulation at some point in time we are going to load this config file into the simulation we are going to see and when it loads it's going to say to gazebo hey please load this controller joint state controller this controller is for publishing on a topic the state of all the joints of the robot the topic is called joint joint states okay then we do that for in order to see everything on on our base afterwards to be able to see or also to read all the values th through a raw topic so this is general so you you should usually do that into your robot also then we have those two parts each one of those is for one of the transmissions that we have indicated here okay so this is for the left lift height so uh, this is uh, applies to the base to lift joint and has those PID values. So I haven't tuned the PID values, sorry, but it works more or less. So that's how it, it works. And then we also indicate the type of controller that this joint is going to have. In this case, it's an effort controller that accepts joint positions. And the same applies for the head angle. So it's for the second transmission that we have here and it applies to the base to head joint and it's an effort controller that accepts joint positions values and that has those PID values of a controller. So that's it. We have everything in there. Then the only thing that it's remaining here that is indicating here is on the launch file. Let me go to the launch file original. Uh, so the one that we have here, the final one that is indicating to the system please load those controllers let me change to xml so we can see easier so this is the final complete launch file for the simulation we have here the previous thing that we did it then we also have here how to launch the empty simulation then we have here the load of the chakra, the URDF file that defines our robot. And then here we are indicating to the param server to load our configuration file. This is the configuration file of the joints, this one here. Okay, so that's the point where this data gets loaded. Okay, now we spawn the robot as the same way as we did before. So that's a similar thing. And then the only things that we are doing different here is to launch this node that this is the controller manager. So the controller manager is the one that actually activates the, let's say the plugins for controlling those two joints, the joint of the lifter and the joint of the head. Those ones that doesn't have a, a proper plugin. So we do with a PID controller that we have defined here. Okay, so this is the one that is saying, hey, please uh, look at that config parameters there and load them in the joints that we have defined. Basically, that's it. And then finally, we have added this part here that is the one that is publishing the changes in those joints into the TF. The TF is the system that is providing at any point in time where are located every part of the robot. Okay, I'm not going to get into the TF. So basically we are done here. Okay, so now that we have spawned this robot, remember that the robot that we have spawned here contains everything because I have it provided to you already. So what can you do with this? Well, you can do whatever you want. For example, if we open a shell, let's open a shell here on tools, go and open a shell, and then let's send some commands to the robot and see how it moves. So let me get a little bit out of it so we can see better. So in this shell, we can do a ROS topic list and we can see all the topics that are published by this robot. For example, here we see the IMU values, we see the odometry, the TF that I mentioned also, and the drop sensor, we can see the values here of the drop sensor, the camera, 
and also the joint states, for example, of the camera of the head. And here we can send commands to the command bell, so we can move the robot around. In order to do that, you can do it directly using ROS topic pub, but let's use the Tartable key keyboard teleop. So you can copy this command here that is going to launch a program that allows you to control the Cosmo by using the keyboard. So if you copy paste the command, ROS launch Tartable teleop keyboard teleop launch, then you can move the robot using the wheel. So here I'm pressing the wheels, you don't see, but you can see the robot moving around. Okay, so I'm not going to, to move it a lot to, to get it there. But there you can see how the robot is, is moving. Okay, this, this simulation still needs to improve, but it's, it's okay. So it's, it's working and you can use for a lot of things. We need to improve the simulation in, in future versions. So, um, th but that's a starting point. Then what else, what else can you do? Well, let me move the robot to the other side, to the other side, so you can see how the, the lift is moved and, and how to, how the, yeah, no, to the other side, yeah. Okay, so now let's select now, let me close this program, okay? So control C. Yeah, and uh, we can move the head by publishing on this topic that contains the head angle. For example, if I copy this command, I can send it, the command here, and then the, 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 the head has been moved up. Also, you can make the lifter to move up. There is here a command that you can send to the proper topic. And uh, yeah, I will leave you to explore all those topics to you. So now if I send it, you see that the topic, the, the lifter has been moved up. So try yourself to that. And finally, I have included here a command that is for launching the Arbis. So you can launch Arbis and see the robot on Arbis. Let's launch it. So I'm copying it and launching it. Remember that when you launch Arbis, the the window of Arbis is not going to show there. It's going to show here on the graphical tools. You need to go to tools and then graphical tools. And here you see, should see Arbis. Let me put it bigger. Uh, I have included an already configured file here for you. So you can go to file, open config, and then select the file that is on home user config Arbis. Here it is. You have all this on the notes. I, I have put it there. And yeah, so I don't know why the robot is not here. Let me see where is the robot. Okay, there it is. Oh, yes, okay, yeah, because it, uh, it's just a few centimeters move. Well, but you can see here the robot with the, uh, with the all the TF frames. There are some problems here in the transformation of the wheels. Still need to check why is not being published because we have configured properly the plugin, but for some reason it's not being published. We are going to solve that in the next uh, versions of the simulation. But at present, it's showing everything: the camera, the IMU, the the lifter, etc. So that's it for today. Just to let you know that this simulation is Git synchronized with our Git of repo of simulations so you can pull at any point in time the simulation so here if you go to here let me close the arbis if you go to the simulations workspace source and then here it's a cosmo simulation here and then you you can do a git status for example and see well now it's on branch master everything is up to date but you can do a git pull origin master and update your simulation here with the changes that we do. Also, if you find any error and you solve it, you can uh, create pull requests from here, from the inside the ROS development studio. And that is all for today.
uh, let me check now the questions. But before I go to the questions, let me tell you that we have the Robot Ignite Academy that is an online academy teaching you about ROS. And we have some related courses about the what we have been seeing here. For example, one about robot creation with URDF. Another one about ROS control that you will see in more detail about the controllers, how to create them, how to configure them. And another one about TF. TF is this side subject that I have mentioned here. And it's very interesting to master because it's very, very important in ROS to understand what it's actually doing. And it's quite a complex concept. I have included here a 10% discount coupon that you can use if you if you are happy to, to try. And that is all from my part. Let me check the questions and see if uh, you have any question and I can help you with this. So I'm going to stop here. Hello. So let me check the questions here. Um, I see many things here. Says uh, Rushir, please let me know. Yes, that's done. Okay, no problem. Palav Bala says it's taking too much time to launch in launching the file. Is it that? So Palav, did you solve your problem with launching the file? So let me let me know if it is being solved or not. Hello. Yeah, I, I think that the camera is st starting to do strange things again, like the other day. But anyway, so. OK. So yeah, so we are back. Okay, great. Then, uh, so let me check uh, the other questions that I have here. Git repo URL. Uh, yeah, so you can check it with uh, Git with the Git info of the prop of the repo. You will see that it's synchronized to the to that repo. Then uh, Rushir says, uh, "Is there motion planning in Arbis? What do you mean, Rushir, by motion planning in Arbis? What What do you mean?" I think that you are confusing RBS with gazebo simulations. I, I'm not sure. Please uh, elaborate again your your question. Uh, Rushir says, I will do it and let you know on the next class. Yeah, OK. <laughs> I don't understand that neither. Uh, Danny says, awesome class. Thank you. Looking forward to continue this series and to control the real Mara. Ah, yeah, OK, yeah, the real Mara is from a previous month. And yeah, we, we are talking with the Aquatronic guys to do this live class with the real robot on Mars. We'll see how it goes. Nothing confirmed yet. Uh, on Danny says, of, out of curiosity, do you know what kind of hardware is inside the Cosmo? No, I think it's proprietary hardware and uh, they have uh, their own uh, drivers inside and so it's actually is not ROS compatible directly. There are some ROS drivers that you can run in an outside computer that connects to the Cosmo robot. And we are going to see that in the last session of this month. Jun Juan says, thank you. OK, thank you, Juan. Jun Juan then found it. Uh, yes, that's Escamiamba says he has found it, the, the Git uh, address. That's correct. Very good. And then Rushir says, I mean, in this file, is there motion planning for this robot we are doing? Uh, motion planning, you mean, motion planning usually means when you need to move some arms. So all the plan that you are going to generate for every one of the joints of the arm until it reaches and grasps something. That's motion planning. I don't know if you mean navigation. Maybe you mean navigation that is a robot moving around. OK, so yeah, so we are going to see that on the third class. Very, very simple, OK? Not very uh, high level, not creating maps and everything, but just moving around and approaching one of the cubes of the Cosmo, because Cosmo likes to 
play with cubes. So we have on the next live class, we are going to see how to simulate the cubes and how then Cosmo will be able to get and grab the cubes with the lift. Okay, Palav Bala says solved. Okay, great. Is your, what's your problem about taking too much time in launching the file? Okay, yeah, I don't know what could happen there, but it's, it is solved and it's great. And I don't know, I think that there are no more questions here. So we are going to finish today because it's already been uh, more than an hour and probably you want to go and have lunch or dinner or breakfast. It depends on the time or coffee, just coffee. Uh, yeah, I would like to have coffee now. Yeah. So anyway, I'll wait for you on the next live class where we are going to use SDF instead of URDF to create this Cosmo world. That is going to be a typical table of a desk of an office, like your, with your computer, your books, your mouse, etc., where the robot will have to move around and, and detect and play with the cubes. We are going to also put the cubes there. And we'll integrate everything, okay? So we'll spawn the robot in that world and create this world. So combine both things. So I'll wait for you. Thank you very much. And please keep pushing your ROS learning. See you next time.